Today is all about defining colors inside Photoshop using the most precise method there is, LAB or just plain lab. Unlike RGB and CMYK, lab is device independent, meaning the colors are not beholden to any screen, printer, or image sensor. They are rather more in keeping with the ways our eyes perceive colors, or if you prefer, the colors in your mind. In this video, I'll show you how lab works and how I used a few very specific lab values to create an ultra smooth gradient rainbow in which each color is clearly distinguishable from its neighbors. And speaking of that gradient rainbow, let's see how it fares right up front when expressed in RGB, CMYK, and lab. Now I'm calling my RGB rainbow perfect because it is perfectly rendered. If I bring up the gradient editor dialog box, you can see that every color stop is exactly what it should be and they are evenly spaced as well. However, I would not call the result perfect. Notice this big flat region of green right here takes up every bit as much room as all of the flesh tones combined. And so even though RGB works out just fine for the device you're looking at, your screen, it doesn't work out nearly as well for the devices you're looking with your eyes. Next, I ran a default conversion to CMYK, which is exclusively of use for pre-press. By the way, if you're printing to a local inkjet device, then print directly from RGB and let the printer driver run the conversion. In any event, you'll get smoother colors where the greens are concerned. We have some nice flesh tones as well. However, the colors overall are gonna be more drab. That's just a fact. As evidence most in the blues and the purples but elsewhere as well no such problem with lab by the way now up front at this point only i'm including asterisks between the various letters in deference to cie lab about which you can learn everything you'd ever want to Great Wikipedia entry, by the way. However, inside Photoshop, go to the image menu, choose mode, and notice it's just plain old lab color. You pronounce it lab as well. And the great thing about lab is it accommodates RGB values and CMYK values as well. You can run LAB values, lab values, that is, and RGB. It's all very flexible. So why don't we take a moment to compare lab directly to RGB. Notice we don't have any of those flat regions of colors no flat blues or greens or yellows or what have you everything is nice and uniform it's brilliantly saturated if you want it to be it's totally up to you and the way i've set things up i dare say that every column of pixels is distinguishable from its neighbors and if at this point you're thinking wait a sec poindexter ease up for a moment why in the world are you doing this well i wanted to come up up with colors for each of the lessons associated with my comprehensive course Photoshop one-on-one -on -one fundamentals it's gonna be 15 lessons long and notice that I came up with a unique color for each and every lesson that forms a kind of rainbow overall and even though you could uh, you could name a color if you want to lesson 13 is obviously yellow but lessons 11 and 12 are both orange both shades of orange anyway and yet they're clearly distinguishable and that is the brilliant thing about lab and in case this rocks your world as much as it does mine then take a moment to subscribe won't you and turn on notifications because the one thing i am never going to do is shy away from the complexities i want you to really understand what's going on which is why i've taken great effort to create what i consider to be the best possible photoshop lab color demonstration file ever Notice up here in the color panel that I have switched in advance to lab sliders. L couldn't be easier. It's lightness, by the way, and it goes from zero to 100. So you might think of it as a percentage control. And even though it's very easy to apply, we'll see that it provides us with some very interesting implications. All of the color information is conveyed by these two guys right here, A and B. They don't stand for anything, but they represent two perpendicular axes of color. If that sounds pretty intense, take a moment to notice that A goes from green to magenta and B goes from blue to yellow. If that looks familiar, familiar to those of you who work inside Lightroom and Camera Raw, 
That's because B is analogous to, not identical, but analogous to temperature, and A is analogous to tint. And so notice, this is tint right here. This is A, and it fits inside the confines of a square. It runs horizontally from really teal over here on the left-hand side to, let's say, lavender on the right. And it varies numerically from negative 128 to positive 127. Now, if that's a little off-putting, consider this. All the negative stuff is going to be over here inside the left half of the field, and all the positive stuff will be be on the right hand side and then we have zero for gray in the middle so 127 positive variations plus 128 negative variations that's 255 then one more variation for zero for gray that takes us to 256 unique variations which is consistent with an 8 bit per channel image meanwhile b the b axis runs vertically as we're seeing right here from blue at the bottom to yellow at the top the range is the same so negative 128 down here at the bottom positive 127 at the top and then zero is absolutely great put them together and you've got basically all the colors in the rainbow subject to different l for lightness values so zero is right in the right in the middle by the way and then the saturation values grow the intensity of the colors gets higher as you move away from the center and so just for the record in case you're curious down here in the bottom left corner a and b are both set to negative 128 and we get a kind of cyan up here in the top right corner a and b are set to positive 127 and we get a kind of red and then we have combinations of a and b negative a and positive b top left and positive a negative b bottom right green and kind of purplish respectively hey real quick i have a patreon patreon.com slash deke now i mention this because that's where i first pitched the idea however tentatively of teaching how to design colors entirely in lab happily there was quite a bit of interest but then came the hard part how do i teach such a thing 18 months later, I've come up with ideas and results and refinements and variations. And by Jove, I think I've got it. If you want to get it too, complete with downloadable assets and directions for their use, join my Patreon. Once again, that's patreon.com slash deeknow. And now back to still more exciting information about the boundless but highly exciting mind colors of lab. Now, in case you're wondering, is this really accurate? Here's what you do. Because you want to be able to play around and just kind of eye drop colors, right? Go ahead and click on any old color swatch to bring up the color picker dialog box that you're probably used to hue being selected. That is the default setting. I would say about 99.9% .9 of people who use Photoshop never change this. And so you end up with this field that looks like this by default. If you want to see the field we're seeing in the background, the AB field, then select the L radio button right there. And sure enough, there is A running horizontally and B running vertically. If you watch those values, you can see them change. If you're interested in matching exactly what I'm seeing on screen right now, then you would set L to 80 and that is going to give you an exact match. And that's because there's one and only one lab, unlike the various color spaces associated with RGB and CMYK, there's just one lab inside Photoshop. It's known as D50 for what it's worth. That's got a TMI. All you need to know is, were you to go up to the edit menu, the assign profile, command will be dimmed as long as you're working inside lab and that just means you don't have to worry about it all right so at this point what i want to do is zoom out a little bit so we can check out the implications of l i'm starting with the a axis up here at the top and i'm varying l in increments of 20 from zero down here at the bottom so notice things do not ever really turn black and we've got l 100 
100 up here at the top and things don't really ever turn white except in the center so the center is going to be white up here and it's going to be black down at the bottom and we do lose some color definition over here in the negative values where the a axis is concerned but i want you to see that we go from l100 where a, where a equals negative 128 is a kind of turquoise if you will what i say before teal and then it becomes more green as the l value goes down whereas at a equals 127 positive we start off as at lavender let's say and we become more red the color gets redder as we reduce the l value compare that to b which really doesn't change as much so here's b 127 yellow at the top with l equals 100 in the left column l equals zero in the right column and notice we just get darker murkier yellows across the top down here at the bottom at b equals negative 128 we start with a kind of i don't know cyan kind of color and we get more of a rich blue what really counts though is what happens when we modify l inside of the a b field so just for a moment think of it this way the a b field is ultimately a square because mathematically it runs across the entire spectrum 256 variations in both directions and then you add slices for l and you end up getting a kind of cube now think of that for a moment put it aside come back to it let's take a look at how things map out for the colors i chose for my rainbow they vary in terms of luminance l that is lightness technically from about 40 where less than six is concerned all the way up to 80 where 13 is concerned where yellow maps out and that's pretty much a great range 40 to 80 i'm oversimplifying but that works out really brilliantly for nice bright vivid colors and i want to show you how those work out if you do happen to go darker you're going to get shadows of course which is totally fine and then if you go brighter than 80 you'll get intense highlights but in any event here's how those 15 colors map out i'll start with l equals 40 approximately by the way where we have four of the 15 colors represented and these happen to be lessons four five six and seven for what it's worth. They're not all exactly L equals 40. There's some variation going on, but approximately. I just want you to see how the colors start moving like they're points in a constellation. Notice if I take things up to L equals 50, the colors are moving outward in both directions. So we're moving out to this kind of cyan and we're moving up here to blue and dark orange. And then at 60, I'm moving out farther. You can see I just have two colors in my group of 15 that are out here at opposite sides here is l equals 70 approximately once again three more colors and then l equals 80 where we're seeing that yellow for example in the center of three and in all and so that adds up by the way to a total of 15 and if you want to see them all and how they move around this constellation here they are set against the background just for what it's worth of an l value of 60. so this field right here that we're seeing inside the color picker matches this guy out here and that means you can just drag around inside of the picker to come up with the a and b values the specific values that you're looking for in any event you may say well why do they kind of you know map out to a circle it's not really a perfect circle it's a blob it's also very subjective by the way i just happen to have chosen these colors you might come up with totally different colors for your color scheme but in any event that's because the corners are kind of dead zones notice that this area doesn't really vary you can see that and this is sa the same for the top left corner and the bottom left corner as well the bottom right corner has a little bit more variation going on depending and it all depends on the l value but you can really think of even though a and b the values definitely define a square field they really fit optically inside of a kind of circle it's not an exact circle by the way but it's a halfway decent way of thinking about things so you can see that i'm just 
generating a circle where this kind of rainbow of colors is concerned. Now let's actually see the rainbow, by the way, the magic of the rainbow. I'm going to switch ahead now. Here we're seeing an RGB rainbow mapped around a circle. I'll go ahead and select this guy. It's right there, RGB rainbow in my list, because I want you to see how it's put together. It has nothing to do with the square field. We are now departing from that, by the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch because this is a shape layer. I'll switch to the path selection tool, A for arrow, by the way. Notice up here in the options bar, I've assigned a stroke. It's a big, thick 800 pixel stroke. Just so you have a sense for what's going on. All these different colors gets pretty intense. You have a little more control if you click on this slider and that way you can bring up the gradient editor dialog box, which you can scale by the way. So you have a little more control over the placement of the color stops. But in any event, I have the style set not to linear, or to radial, that would not work at all. They're cool, but still what I have is angle so that we're working the colors around the circle. And as long as your first color stop and your last color stop match each other, then you'll get a continuous rainbow as we're seeing right here. This is RGB, I wanna stress, which means now we have this big glumping area right here of green, of, you know, just a bunch of green that doesn't look any different, especially I would say this area doesn't look different at all. And the same goes for, you know, there are areas of blue and red that don't change tremendously. And again, we have a very small area of flesh tones. Compare that to lab. Now lab is up to you. These are custom colors that I came up with. Your lab rainbow might very well vary. However, it is the same thing. If I were to switch to my lab rainbow right there, you can see if I press the A key for the arrow tool that I am once again creating an angle stroke that starts at red and ends at red, just so we have a continuous realm of colors going on. These happen to be subjective colors and they all come from my color scheme, by the way. So 15 different key colors at all. And then Photoshop is otherwise blending between them automatically in case you're curious what values I came up with. Again, divorce yourself from that square AB field. This is not what we're seeing right here. However, I have positioned the darkest color at the bottom 40 for L. So it's L slash A slash B. That's how these values are arranged. 40 down here at the bottom and 80 up here at the top. So it's just that limited range. I'm not going any farther for the sake of demonstration. However, the AB value is very like crazy, right? Sometimes we have a negative A value and a positive B value. Other times we have a positive A value and a negative B value. However, I'm not really going wild. So in other words, I don't go as low as negative 128 and as high as positive 127 because generally speaking, that doesn't really get you anywhere. You can play with your colors and try them out. But for now, these are some specific colors that you can dial in as a starter point for your wild color imagination. So what do you think? Are you ready to let loose inside the color picker dialog box? Comment below and then like, you gotta like this one, subscribe and turn on notifications. And for a deep dive into lab, complete with detailed sample files, join me at patreon.com slash deke now, and then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter, which this week appears in lab. Bale Chimps version of Lev. I'm Dick McClellan. This is Deke Now.